Starting and running a business is hard, but you don't have to do it alone. Whether you're an established business owner or thinking about starting a side hustle to earn extra income, I am here to teach you how to show up as your unfiltered self, level up your business, and thrive as a mompreneur. Let's embrace the chaos and start enjoying the journey together. I'm Amy Tra, and you're listening to the Motivated Mompreneur Podcast. Welcome back into the Motivated Mompreneur Podcast. Today, I am talking with Melissa all about email marketing and running a full-time business with a life-first focus. Because so many times as moms, we are working 24-7 as a mom, working 24-7 trying to grow a business, and then we just end up burnt out, stressed out, and overwhelmed. But Melissa is here as proof that it is possible to find a way that works for you. And I'm really excited to dive into this conversation, number one, because it's an awesome topic, and number two, because we found each other through the, the wonderful world of social media and the internet but we're only 20 minutes away from each other. So talk about a small world. Like it is just crazy the connections that you can build when you use social media and the internet for good. So with that being said, Melissa, I am so excited to chat with you today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Um, It's gonna be so so good. So tell us more about yourself, who you are, what you do and who you serve. Sure. So I am a former history teacher. I taught for 15 years in the classroom. And all of a sudden, three years ago, I was like, let me start this online side business. I just needed to supplement my income. My daycare bill was, you're going to be mind blown when I tell you the price of it. It's $3,800 a month, $3,800, which was double our mortgage. It's crazy. So I was literally looking for like an extra income. So I started this business on the side. I would teach a full day of high school history and put my kids, come home, feed them dinner, put them to bed, and then go work between 7 and 10 p.m. And I was getting very burnt out. And then all of a sudden, it dawned on me, my husband said, why don't you hire help? And I was like, oh my gosh, this is great. So I hired my first two assistants last year, and it was the best decision I have. And now we have a team of eight under me, and they're all working mom, not working moms. Well, yeah, they're working moms. A lot of them are stay-at-home moms um, taking care of their kids and just trying to do a business also on the side. So I love that I employ these eight moms that have a family and it's been great and they're all over the country. It's so cool to follow. So Uh, that's amazing because, you know, honestly, as a business owner, that's one of the scariest hurdles when you get to that point where you're ready to start hiring out. It's like, oh gosh, but at least for me, that has paid off tenfold. Have you found that to be yeah, true as I, well? I was logging, I think close to 70 hours a week. I don't know how I did it, but like I was working full-time job and I was logging close to 70 hours a week. It was crazy. And I was literally not sleeping. I was waking up in the morning to do work. I was like trying to get this business running. And then all of a sudden I started hiring people and they started taking stuff off my plate and doing it as good as I did it. And I think that's the reality is you got to see, like you're nervous to let it go, but you can just train them and um, have them be as good, if not better than you, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Letting go, that can be a hard thing to do because so many times we tell ourselves these stories that, oh, I have to be the one doing this. Well, no, look at where your zone of genius is and stay within that zone of genius. You know, there are people that are wildly capable when you just give them the opportunity. So I just think that's amazing. And something I want to dive into is Email marketing, you know, this is one of, at least what what I have found with my clients, one of the most underutilized, but most important things as a business owner that you can be taking advantage of. What are your thoughts on that? Oh my gosh. So I started doing email marketing for my own business and it started as a hobby for me. I just started doing it. I didn't know, like I had five subscribers on my list and I was super proud of having those five. And I was like, okay, I'm going to email them consistently. And then my five grew into a hundred and then it grew into a thousand. And now my list is a decent size and I'm about to break. I'm super proud of it. I'm about to break a hundred thousand dollars in online sales from my email list alone, which is super exciting. And it's only, it's taken me like three, four years to do. Um, and it's just grown. And then all of a sudden people started hiring me to run their email campaigns for them. So I have an intermittent faster who we write blogs. She writes the blogs and she does the podcast. And then we write the emails for her. We have a sports um, commentator. We have an accounting executive. We have all these different businesses that hire us to do emails. 
and we love it because it's great because you own your list. You're not subject to the algorithm of social media or the algorithm of TikTok or Instagram or anything like that. You control your list and you decide when you want to have a sale or you decide when you want to put a product out there or you want to teach your audience about a different subject. It's important. So you can decide and control your email list. Ah, oh, so important because yeah, it's a list that you own. I think often we think that social media is, you know, we get we get stuck in chasing this shiny object, the followers and the likes and the engagement. And, you know, at the end of the day, like you said, you're at the mercy of the algorithm. And if your account gets quote unquote hacked, you can lose all of that overnight. Yeah, all so. your work you put into Instagram, it could be lost. Like someone could hack your account and it's closed. Whereas your email list is yours, you own it, you control it. Guys, oh, so important. So where did you even start? You And I love how you talked about, you know what? When I started, I was a beginner. I had five people. Like, that's awesome. Thank you for that. Because I think often we forget that we all start at ground zero. So where did you even start to build your list? How did you go through and navigate that process? Yeah, I created a really good opt-in and then I started promoting my opt-in on Facebook, on Instagram, on Pinterest. I promoted it in my products that I was selling. I'm in the teacherpreneur space, so we sell lessons online. And so I started just promoting it with other teachers and people started joining my list and they don't know that they're number five on your list or number a hundred thousand on your list. They don't know that, but they do know if you don't send an email. So I think the most important thing I took away from like my early experiences was send the email consistently, decide what your goal is for email marketing. So if you want to send an email once a week, do it. If you want to do it once a month, do it. If you want to send it every two weeks, do it. Whatever you feel like you can manage successfully, then set that goal and stick with it. Because most important thing you can do is consistency with email marketing. Oh, I love that consistency. And that is something I think as moms, especially we forget because we try the thing for maybe a week, two weeks, three weeks, and it, it's not working. So we give up and we pivot to something else and we're constantly like chasing, chasing, chasing. Well, no, it's going to take time to build that list. Mm -hmm. Even you alluded to the fact that it's been three to four years for you to build a sizable list. And, you know, there's something said to being a beginner too. You know, I honestly liked when I was a beginner because it was like, I could practice different things. I could see what was getting clicked on and opened. And it's kind of cool diving into those analytics. What do yeah, you- Yeah, and then encouraging replies are helpful too. Right. Like encourage replies and getting them to reply to your emails. Yes, definitely. So what do you feel are like the, the standards we should be aiming for? So what are like current- What's a good open rate? What's a good click-through rate? Let's dive into that a little bit. Yeah, so my clients see open rates as high as like 75% on email, which is unbelievable. I like to see a bare minimum 30% open rate and a 5% click rate in the email. And if you're not getting that 30 and five, we got to evaluate your list, clean your list, sometimes helps, um, and just see how you're sending that email, how you're writing, where are you putting the clicks, the buttons, all of that makes a big difference in your email. I do audits all the time and I love doing them and I love seeing like where someone could improve their email marketing and um, we do it. Oh, that's awesome. And tell us more about, you said cleaning your list. What does that mean? Yeah, so I, I just did a reel about it, which is so funny, but um, the idea is that Every so often you should clean your list. And what that means is look for emails. Your email provider will tell you which ones are not opening your email. So I use ConvertKit, but like you can use any provider and they'll tell you this person hasn't opened an email in 90 days. So at that point, you can send them a breakup email and literally say, it's time to go. Are you not reading your emails? If you want to stay on my list, click here and give them a real direct click here. If you want to stay, if you don't, I'm going to remove you. And I used to take it personally when people unsubscribed or when people removed themselves, or I felt weird. Do I really want to delete the subscriber because I worked so hard to get them? But the reality is they're not opening your emails. They're not your ideal customer avatar, like Amy Porterfield says, and they're not opening your emails. They're not buying your products. They're not reading your product, your post, your teaching. And like the reality is you don't want them on your list. You're paying for them. So clean the list. Yes. Yes. And once you remove that ego from the equation and stop taking things personally, you are growing you're opening up room for so much growth and potential like you said you know a lot of times 
with so many different platforms, you're paying per the number of subscribers you have. So the bigger the list, the more you're paying. So if you're having people that aren't even opening anything that you're sending, those aren't your ideal client. They're not going to be the one that you want to be pouring into. So get past the ego and clean it up. I love that. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And I have clients, my clients hire me for the, cold, it's what's called a cold subscriber package where we basically clean your list every 90 days and we do it like on a schedule and it's great. And I have a bunch of clients that hire me for that. And they love that their list is relevant, clean and affordable ish because the list can get expensive. So right. you want to keep people there that you want to pay for. Right. Absolutely. And as a business owner, it's important to be keeping track of what those overhead expenses are, because if you're spending all this extra money on this next tier of of your your email provider when half of them aren't even open it yet right there that saves you money that decreases your expenses that's more money in your pocket which we all love right i mean let's yeah. be honest yeah. <laughs> and it also gives you a better idea of like who are your customers because if you have 50 percent open rate and those pe other 50 people are not even open your emails you know which links they're clicking based on which ones are opening. So it gives you a better accurate number of how bit well your business is also doing. Ah, oh, so good. So shifting gears a little bit, you're navigating, running a full-time business. You're a mom of two very young children, but you're working part-time hours. So how are you able to put life first? How do you navigate that? Yeah, so I learned the life first principle. I think it's like trademark, Sarah Wiles. Um, came up with the life first principle and I learned about it from her and I've, I've like blown away. I literally was burning myself out. My husband was like, you're putting in too many hours. What can I do to take off your plate? So my husband does a ton. My husband does laundry. He makes dinners. Like he puts the kids to bed. Like I have a partner, like if you watch, follow that fair play, play lifestyle, I have a partner that's equal. So I think that makes a big difference. And he's super supportive of my business from the beginning. Even when I was struggling, he was like helping me do parts of the back end of the business. And then he's like, why don't you hire someone for what I'm doing? And then I was like, oh, that's a good idea. So I think that made a big difference. But then prioritizing now, I'm trying to work 25 hours a week. I was burnt out. And I think that the point when I left the classroom last year, I was like, how am I running a business full time? That's making more than my teaching salary and then also teaching. So once I left teaching, I was like, I'm going to put my life first. I'm going to start volunteering again. So I've joined a couple of volunteer organizations. I became class mom and PTO mom at my son's school. Um, I just decide when I want to work. So if I have a time block on the weekends, I hire a babysitter and I, I've started saying it's okay. My kids are happy. They're playing with the babysitter. They're going outside and playing for a couple hours and then I can work for two hours and then the rest of the day I'm full-time mom during the day. So like you got to just decide and set boundaries of when you want to work and when you don't want to work. Sometimes I put my kids to bed at seven, seven 30, and then I'm working until 10. Um, and that's when I work in that chunk of time because they were home during the day. So like you got to just set boundaries of when you want to work and when you don't want to work and your goals. That is huge because so many of us get stuck in the mom martyr syndrome. We think that in addition to our business, we have to do it all. And it can be hard. You don't. Exactly. Yeah. And you, I love you that. You don't. Yeah, no, like I started, I, my husband was literally like, what could we hire out to make your life easier? I was like, I hate cleaning the house. I know that sounds really silly. No, so we same. hired a cleaning person to come once a week. She cleans. I hate going to the grocery store. I hired someone to Instacart. So I do grocery delivery. Like that has made my life easier. It has saved me an hour of time that I can put into my business. And I do little things like that. What can I do or delegate to make my life easier? Whether it's to my team or to my home life, what can I do? So. Right, right. You're buying back your time. Yes, there's a small cost to that, but look at what revenue you can generate when you're working on your business. You know, you're saving that hour out of your day that now can be used to generate income. And that right there, that's a game changer. When you just let go of what's going to cost me money? Well, no, you need time. Time is what you need because by having the time, you will generate more money. You know, it's, it's hard to wrap your mind around at first, but once you do, oh my gosh, oh it's my incredible. Gosh. And as moms, we need those periods of focus time. If you're trying to juggle all the things, you're trying to navigate having toddlers at home with you while you're trying to work, it's not going to work because you need that focused time. I can't navigate it. I know there's can some people I, can that I show try. You 
So I have this awesome ha hack. I got it on Amazon and this little timer, I don't know if you can see it, but like it has a, see how it's got a timer. This is awesome for little kids. Um, so what I do with my kids, if I ever have to work in chunks of time, I set usually a 20 minute chunk of time. My kids, I set it right on the desk and I say, mommy's got to work for 20 minutes, go play for 20 minutes. And then after 20 minutes, I will come play with you. And this has been a game changer for having little kids because I was remotely working from home with my kids, running my business, teaching full time. And this has helped me tremendously. This little, I don't know if it's a Pomodorian method or something like that, but like this has been helpful. And then with little kids, they see the timer. So they know mommy's working right now. And then mommy's not working right now. Yeah. I mean that right there game changer. And I think kids understand, like they're smarter than we give them credit for a lot of times. And if you can visually show them like, all right, when this timer, when this red space on the timer goes away, that's our time together. They get it then. I mean, even when you're playing yeah. with them, you know, then set it again. Okay. We can play until this timer goes off and then mom has to go do some more work. But you know, it, and they get it and you can train them to realize that. So it is exactly. possible and you're showing I, us how. I did the little thing my mom, my mom suggested it was the best thing ever. My one son was done napping, but my other son was not done napping. So she suggested something called quiet time. Have you ever heard of this from other moms that you work with? Mm -mm. So my mom suggested quiet time. So my son goes in his room and plays quietly in his room for the time that my other son was napping. So I had a substantial chunk of time, two hours of work time while they were napping and having quiet time. And still to this day, my kids are four and six, they're not napping anymore, I wish they were. But <laughs> they they still do quiet time in their room so I can get a chunk of time on Saturday and Sunday or whatever day we have no school during the day where they play in the room, they have certain toys they play with, they put their laundry away now. Like I've gotten them so trained, it's so funny. Right, that's just it. And again, you know, you've shown them how to do that. You know, sometimes we forget how they're capable. And even my kids, I hated the packing their lunches, absolutely despised packing lunches. Like why, why aren't they packing their own lunches? Like they're capable, so guess what? It wasn't pretty at first. There was jelly everywhere. There was food, like pretzels on the floor. I mean, it was a mess, but now they pack their own lunches and it's just again empowering kids with these life skills because one day they're going to need to know how to pack a lunch and hey let's teach them let's teach them how to put away their laundry let's teach them how to contribute to the family because we as moms should not be trying to do it all ourselves because like you said it just leads to even more burnout oh. No, I know. And I, I accepted that like their, their laundry is not folded. It's in the drawer. It's in the right section. Yep. So that's a win in my book. And I, I, it's not one of the battles that I'm willing to pick. And as a mom, it's okay because they're learning to put their laundry away. They'll be better spouses for it. So yeah, exactly. It's all about just picking your battles, picking your focus, because you know, there's only so much energy to go around in a given day. And when you're trying to build a business and raise a family, you have to be intentional about how you're spending your time and energy. Yeah, so, so good. Any other last tips, juicy nuggets for us that you want to leave listeners with today? If you haven't started an email list, start one now. I think the soonest you should do it was yesterday. Uh, the sooner, the better, I think. And then consistently email them. And if you are struggling with ideas, you can Google on the internet, go on Pinterest, like figure out email ideas for your list because that is the wave of the future. Email lists and text messaging are gonna be the newest waves um, because social media only lives for a very short period of time. Whereas emails go right to your inbox. And that's the last thing you check before you go to bed. And it's often the first thing you check in the morning is your email. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And how many people still have their notifications on? So even when an email hits the inbox, ding, you know, they're seeing you in there. So yeah. I cannot agree more. And thank you so much for those valuable takeaways just about email marketing and life and business and just navigating everything as a mom. Because as moms, you know, let's learn from other moms that are are doing the thing. Let's learn what's working for them and try it. Learn those systems and adapt them to your life. It's time to start working smarter, not harder. It is possible to lead a life without the burnout and overwhelm. Melissa is proof that you can do it. And I just thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to share with us today. Thanks so much for having me. One other thing, where can we find you? 
not another va.com. So not another va.com, not another VA on Instagram. I have a great Facebook group that's for email marketing only. So if you want to join the group, it's got like 2000 subscribers on it, email Facebook users on it, which I'm super proud of. Um, and they ask questions about email marketing and my team and I respond every day. So it's email marketing that works on Facebook and you can find me at not another va.com or not another VA on Instagram. Amazing. So be sure to check the show notes out for direct links to all of those. And until next time, stop dreaming and start taking messy action. You've got this. Are you loving what you're hearing? Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss an episode.